Hello and welcome to another Think About It. Today we're going to talk about discipline as it relates to your child, to children. And of course we all know that that's a um, slippery slope. We all know that um, some people feel there's too thin of a line between physical discipline and abuse. Um, but let's talk about what the Bible says about disciplining a child. And, and why it's so important. We're living in a society where, in a lot of cases, the tail is wagging the horse. Um, children are telling parents what they are and are not going to do. Um, speaking to them in ways that goes beyond inappropriate. Um, it goes beyond <laughs> disrespectful. I mean, to the point of just distasteful, it's crazy. And yet, we have to, we have laws we should abide by. We live in a society now that thinks that any type of physical discipline is inappropriate. Um, the Bible disagrees, all right? And certainly we know that the Bible is not promoting child abuse. The Bible is not in any way promoting any type of physical discipline that that leaves a child uh, injured or scarred. Certainly it's not saying that, but it says, it is saying that parents should not be afraid to apply appropriate discipline to a child. Children don't know what to do. They learn what to do. They're, 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 they're governed. Uh, they're directed as to what to do and how to do it. They just can't do that on their own. They need direction and they need discipline. Now how to best do that, it's a difficult task. Everybody knows it. But let's just look at a couple of areas of the Bible that I thought was very interesting because in Proverbs 13, 24, uh, there's this text that a lot of people just absolutely hate. They despise it. It's despicable. They have disdain for it. It says, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him uh, chasteneth him, uh, you know, betimes. So <laughs> he that spares the rod hateth his child. The Bible is not promoting beating your child with an object. That word rod is, is, is where a lot of... Uh, 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 consternation comes from um, people say, "Well, people pick up curtain rods." Well, let's let's talk about what it is, because that rod that that people hold such a disdain for in Proverbs thirteen twenty four is the same rod, the same word that they adore in in Psalms twenty three four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Same word. Same rod. So certainly the Bible is not talking about beating a child or abusing a child. Um, the rod that the shepherd uses to keep the sheep in line is done in a very gentle and helpful way to the point that the psalmist said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The staff is the one that we're familiar with, the long stick with the hook, that when, 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 a, when a sheep was stranded or got caught in a hole, they could gently pull them out. The rod kept them in line, kept them in direction, but in the right direction, but it never promoted it never once promoted that we should be abusive to our children. But I do believe that that lack of discipline in our society today paints the color of, of, of society as it is with, you know, the tail wagging the horse. And the truth of the matter is, the Bible says there are times for some physical discipline that doesn't leave your child scarred, doesn't leave your child injured, but it does help them understand who has authority and who does not. So the Bible certainly is not against uh, some physical discipline. 
And to the point that he says, he who spareth the rod, meaning who spareth gentle, loving, kind, but necessary discipline, really doesn't care much for their child. So the truth of the matter is, the Bible does promote some physicality, never to injure, scar, or, or, or maim, anything like that. But certainly, isn't it time that we let our children know that we're not afraid of them and that the love of God that's in us requires us to check them in ways that they understand? Isn't this something we should at least think about? 